Welcome to the Zaxby's Coaches Show, brought to you by First Bank, Wilkinson Chevy Cadillac Buick GMC, and Zaxby's Friends, Family, Flavor, with your host, Chris DeLambert, only on the NFHS Network, brought to you by New Image Media. Zaxby's Coaches Show, from the floor of Wilkinson Cadillac, I'm Chris Lambert, your host, and with me right out of the gate, Coach Steve Bordeaux, head coach, yeah. Lee County Yellow Jackets. You guys, man, what's it been, five years since there's been a regular season loss at, at, uh, at Lee County? I guess this is the, the beginning of the fifth year. You guys got out of the gate quickly this week. Uh, Northwood, who returned a lot of talent from a playoff team last year that uh, not only got to the second round, but you know lost to Havelock, who is mm -hmm. a juggernaut. Um, Kind of surprised by the result. Were you? Um, I think we matched up really well with them. The things that they they do very well and will do really well all season were things that we do a really good job of stopping. Um, so I think that was part of it. We matched up really well. I think we had a good game plan, uh, offense and defensively. And the boys did a really good job of running to the football on defense. Um, I, I was very proud of how, how the boys played. All right. For those of you that didn't get across the uh, county line over to Northwood, 62 to nothing was the score. Um, a game that was split in half. They got uh, a quarter and a minute yeah. in, up uh, 25 to nothing, and had to had to postpone the game yeah. before the extra point. Mm -hmm. You guys had to come back and do it Saturday morning and, and pick up where you left off. Talk about what that's like. I mean, yeah. it's not the first time you guys have split games in in your uh, tenure there at Lee County, but but what are the challenges that come with that? Yeah, so I feel like the first game every year we've been getting poured on. Last year South Granville, the year before E. Smith, we got split. But, you know, really it's getting the kids focused. We go in the gym and we're kind of in a holding pattern of are we going to play tonight? Are we going back tomorrow? We don't really know. Lightning strikes keep happening. Does it make sense for sit around for two hours and still not play? So keeping them a little bit focused and in the game just in case we play. As soon as we made the decision, it was, all right, we got to make sure we have something to eat the next morning to get them here, get them ready, get him here on time. We can, you know, and just restart a whole game plan of – uh, going back through warm-ups and all, just really keeping them focused. And they did a fantastic job of when we showed back up on Saturday morning, it was just like another game. They went back through the regular routine. They had a lot of energy, a lot of juice. And at no point did we really ever talk about the score. It was never, you know, we're up big, this or that. It was just we're going to continue to just to do what we're supposed to do. Well, that's something that I think with regular season in the former conference mm -hmm. um, that you kind of got accustomed to. Is you, yeah. If you watch the scoreboard, you're going to get kind of bored. Right. Um, like I said, this Northwood game, I really thought that Northwood would challenge you, uh, especially stop the run. That's a team last year that only gave up double figures a couple of times mm -hmm. all season. And like I said, the, there's the one aberration against Havelock. But yeah. as we sit here tonight, you're the number two 3A team in the East, in you know statewide. Mm -hmm. Havelock's number one. Right. And kind of hard to argue with that one and two. But uh, Northwood, you know, I guess with the challenges that you faced, better to be on your side of the score yeah. than to come back already down 25 to nothing a quarter in. Um, we, Nate, the play-by-play -play guy, Nathan Cochran and I, we, we had a long discussion throughout the week and a half uh, leading up to the game, and I thought we probably just should have asked you because <laughs> we wanted to know what the backfield was going to look like. You got a lot of talent back there. I mean, you returned JoJo Jennings and TJ Johnson, mm -hmm. both defensive studs Definitely. that kind of carried the rock last year. B.J. Brown, who had a 100-yard game in his first, first game last year and then missed the rest of the season, mm -hmm. he's back. You transfer Kendall Morris from Southern mm -hmm. Lee, who's another uh, 1A back, and you've got some kids that came out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, how many guys got touches at the running back position this week? I think it's seven or eight, um, seven or eight. And I think four different kids end up scoring uh, a rushing – four, actually five end up scoring a rushing touchdown. TJ also had a receiving touchdown. A lot of guys carried the ball. A lot of guys did a really good job of doing what they're supposed to do. But it all comes back to the offensive line making those things happen for them. You know, it don't, it don't, it doesn't do, it, nothing happens without those big boys. So uh, every year I have the same conversations with people close to the program, and they're like, you can't wait till you see oh, yeah. fill in the blank. Yeah. And you talked about the weight room. Mm -hmm. And coming into that game, you guys oftentimes win the bus battle with the size. Your offensive line is gargantuan yeah, there's, there's at this boys. point. Those guys, I mean, yeah. you got some real D1 bodies over there. Mm -hmm. And sort of the knock or the rub against Lee County in years gone past when there's been a lot of talent, well, when they get in the playoffs, get pushed around a little right. bit on that offensive line, man, That's it's going to be tough to push those guys around. You, you've yeah. got some, some horses over there that have put on 
an amazing amount of weight. Yeah, and I, I hope that's the case. And I hope, I hope, I hope they continue to be the strong guys and move people out of the way. But you know, Aiden and Wyatt and Caden and Braden, uh, Tyler McMullen. I was going to say you Brandon left McMullen out of there. And yeah, Brandon Williams. They're, they're, we play seven or eight guys in the regular rotation. And then, you know, of course, everybody you know, in the game, we get in the game where everybody's playing. But seven or eight guys are going to be in our normal rotation on the offensive line. Um, we feel like really quality guys, and most of them are juniors. Um, so that's a good thing. It's, yeah, it's a good thing for you. <laughs> Scary for everybody else that's out there. Um, you know, Coach Santiago, your offensive oh, yeah. line coach, and I, we, we converse every once in a while, and, and he'll throw me a bone and be like, you know, watch for this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Rickard this weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and the left side of that line with Ian McMullen lined up on, on the left, that's just scary coming downhill at the 3A level yeah. in high school football. Wyatt is a kid that loves playing offensive line. You know, sometimes people are like, well, I'd rather play defense. Hey, I'd rather play linebacker. Wyatt embraces being an offensive lineman. He's really good at it. All right, so this year was a, a little bit of flux from a coaching staff standpoint. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, it seems like we just did this a week ago yeah. with the coaches show, but it also seems like a million years ago because so much has happened since then. You had the late start, late finish last year. You turn around and you had to go into this thinking with this compressed off season, there's going to be very little movement yeah. along among coaches. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't have been any different <laughs> for the entire conference, right. but specifically for your school. Mm -hmm. So how many total coaches did you lose from your staff this past season? Uh, we lost three. Okay. We lost three coaches. And, and key amongst those, I, th yeah. I think it's fair to say yeah, is number, number one, Coach Jacobs. Yes. Like Coach Jacobs is, it was our defensive coordinator. It's it, it, it been the, the guy right beside me through everything we've done. Um, had an opportunity to be, become a head coach at uh, Middle Creek, which is within here to Walmart across the street to, uh, to his house. Um, so a great opportunity for him. Um, maybe not happen at the best time that we would like it to happen. Um, <laughs> so for the people out there that yeah. aren't keeping track, about two weeks before yeah, opening day yeah, is so when the like, announcement came. Yeah, so like the August 2nd, 3rd-ish after, you know, it, it was really recently. Um, so it, it, it's, it, he's doing a really good job already there getting, getting things working and um, shoot, they, they played their first game within two weeks of him ever being a head coach there. Um, I'm excited for him. Uh, obviously, we, we miss him. I uh, look forward to go watching them play in a few weeks whenever we have our bye week. Uh, and I'm sure he will do the same on his. Well, a couple of things. First of all, I'm glad you said that you're excited for him because if, if, if a dozen people haven't asked me, one hasn't. Yeah. Do you think Coach Bordeaux was mad? No, no, and I'm no, like, no, no, no. They came here together. Mm -hmm. I think everybody always knew that Coach Jacobs was a head coach in waiting, mm -hmm. and as soon as a good offer came that he yeah. was going to transition out. I think the timing, you know, yeah. but there's nothing you can do about that. No. Um, he also took – Coach Willicks. Um, yes. So, so in, in the last three seasons, we've had two guys lead to be a head coach and three guys lead to be a coordinator from our staff. So um, you know, we, we have a really good group of, of coaches that continue to build, and that's what we're going to continue to work to do. Well, that's – I'm not trying to blow sunshine at you, but that's a credit to you. Because if you're not growing head coaches out of your staff, um, you're not doing them any service. Now, you did lose your offensive coordinator, Coach mm -hmm. Willicks, mm -hmm. left. Um, now, you're a head coach that's always called your offensive plays. And I've, I've asked you before, you're going to have somebody else call your plays, and you look at me like I'm crazy. Right. So I get that. But you're trying to do a double right now that we don't see very often. And I'm interested to see how well you pull it off because yeah. you're calling the defense too. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested too. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> now, nah, but what what makes that be able to happen? You mentioned Coach Santiago, and we got Coach Let, Coach Heron, Coach Thompson, Coach Thompson, Coach Green, Coach Wilson. We got all these other great guys, great coaches that are going to be. Or they can lock down a position and hold those kids accountable and make sure the things we need to be getting done get done to allow me to be able to still work on the offense and work on defense, work with the JV. It allows us to do those things. But if we didn't have really quality guys who could hold those groups accountable, it couldn't happen. So from your standpoint, there's got to be some concern that something, one of those balls might hit the ground yeah. in, a, in a tight game. Is it clock management? Right. Is it yeah. you know pulling a kid aside mm -hmm. and having a conversation with them? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it missing something because you're so locked into the play column? Mm -hmm. What thing is it that stands out that you're like, I'm really worried that at some point this might catch up with us. Well, I think our biggest thing is we talk about all the time with the kids is just communication. We do, I think we do a pretty good job on our headsets with communicating, but even more so this year, it's going to be, hey, coach, I need you to do this. And it might be bring me the iPad and have play seven loaded up so we can watch it real quick in between a timeout, in between a quarter, whatever it may be, to make sure we don't wait till all the way till halftime to make an adjustment. We got the information in game. Um, but I think it, it all comes back to communication and the trust that I have with the, the, all the coaches that work with us 
and you know, they, they're the ones that really make it happen. All right, so last year coming into the season, the, the position group that you probably were most concerned with replacing mm -hmm. was that defensive line. You lost two D1, yeah, um, yeah. D1 quality athletes. Um, this year, you come off, you're losing two more quality, quality mm -hmm. defensive, linemen's, uh, defensive linemen. But I think that the position group that, that stands out to me that there has to be continuity with and, and roll over very quick is the corners. Yeah. Um, who are the guys that, that you're counting on to take the place of Jaden Marshall and uh, Carlos Hancock last so, year? So Kenyon Palmer and Aaron Wallace, um, they both played a whole lot last year. Um, so they're, 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 they're two of the guys in the backfield uh, in, in the secondary. Tyreek's playing a lot in the secondary um, at a safety position. So guys that have already made a whole lot of varsity football plays um, six, and are very good athletes are in those positions. Um, they just might have not have played as much defense as they will this year. All right, so bad weather this past weekend. We're in a situation where last year coming in we said, you know, this, this team is largely going to go where quarterback Will Patterson takes them. Mm -hmm. um, this is his year. He's senior, got a full year starting under his belt, mm -hmm. really got better and better and better throughout the course of last season. Um, coming into this season, where have you seen growth from Patterson from – his junior year to his senior year. Yeah, I think some of it's just taking leadership, even at practice. Um, he he definitely knows our offense. He knows what to expect. He knows w when this happens, this is what should happen. He can correct even if he makes a mistake. He can already tell you why he made the mistake. So just the growth that you want to see, even from day to day in practice, is still happening. Um, so. To me, I'm still excited that he is a very, very good football player, but he still is able to get better. All right, very good. So, anything else you want to add before we start giving away hardware? I say bring the boys. Let's bring the boys out. Let's give out some stuff. All right, very good. We'll take a quick break. You're watching the Zaxby's Coaches Show. We'll see you on the other side. Pentair, empowering people to move water, improve water, enjoy water so that people can live their best, healthiest lives. Lives with purpose. Lives with enjoyment. Lives that flourish. Lives with hope. Because at Pent Air, we're not just about better water. We're about better life. Pent Air, bringing water to life for life. WilkinsonCars.com. Come visit us at our new location in Sanford. With the same great staff and the same great service, test drive one of our many different vehicles. Check out our state-of-the-art service department and collision center, where our team can have you back on the road in no time. We're right across from Walmart at 3335 North Carolina 87 South. Schedule your appointment online at WilkinsonCars.com or call us at 919-842-3322. We guarantee we're the place to be at Wilkinson Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. We are professional grade. All right, welcome back to the Zaxby's Coaches Show. Chris Lambert, Coach Steve Bordeaux, we're here. And you've got two players out on set. Your players of the game on offense and defense, if you'd do the honors, please, sir. Yeah, definitely so. So Eli Garrison was our offensive player of the week this week. Senior wide receiver, one of our one of our leaders, without a doubt, had a a, a real big catch uh, for a, a big uh, big touchdown and and uh, made a couple really good plays that sprang some some runs. So Eli was the offensive player of the week. And then beside him, we got Darion you know, Jojo Jennings uh, was our defensive player of the week. Also got him, you know, one carry for a touchdown. So he, he got he got the got the touchdown in there too. Uh, probably would have liked to have had some more carries, but you know he'll, that, that'll work itself out. Played uh, a couple different positions on defense, made some plays, set the defensive front, and did a really good job. All right, Mr. Garrison. Yes, sir. You returning punts. How badly do you want to take one back to the house before the end of the year? Really bad. <laughs> just one. Just one would be awesome. So what I really want to know is, would you rather return punts or play NBA Jam? Um, I'd, rather, I'd rather return a touchdown punt than play NBA Jam. But if you ask me, just kind of doing whatever, then probably NBA Jam. All right, I can I can dig that. I can dig that. So I think that you that you're solidly in there as that number three receiver. It's really easy to say you're kind of taking on the role that Jackson Lamb left behind. Um, in a perfect world, when you think about what this season looks like. 
that, that third spot as a receiver? Um, numbers wise, you know, I don't know. I like that. Um, I like that. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's yards, it's like that. All right, very good. JoJo, all these accolades keep coming your way. All state this year. Um, so one carry for one touchdown. I, You know, if it was me, I might just stop. Be like, look, 100% touchdowns. Um, playing as in the heart of that defense, what? how do you feel your role has changed from last year to this year? in terms of leadership or your role in the defense? Be more of a leader. Yeah, because last year, I was just kind of a leader, but a quiet leader. And how comfortable are you with that role? I'm comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with it. When you go into a, a game like against Northwood this past weekend, what kind of goals do you all set as a defense? Are you looking at the scoreboard? Are you trying to track how many yards you give up? What, 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 what kind of measurable metrics do you guys use to, to gauge success? Or is it just all about that W? Okay. See how many plays they can do without them getting so and so many yards, a carry or a drive. Just trying to keep our defense off the field get an offense back on the score. All right. So over the course of the next six, nine, 12 months, you're going to have a lot of people in your dining room talking to you about playing football on Saturdays. As we sit here today, if you could pick one school in the country to go play ball at, where would it be? I'm thinking right now. It would definitely be Ohio State. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> he you I like up. that. He, he sets you up. I like that. I like that. He told me to say that. Like he told me to say that. Coach, what would you say? What would you like to say about these young men? Yeah, both of them are, are, are high end, high quality guys. That's why, of course, we bring them here, uh, and, and really proud of the way that they continue to lead our our, pro, our program to new heights. Um, you know, Eli talks about he, he's a very humble kid, not worried about his stats and all that stuff. But you know, when he gets the ball in his hands, he does a really good job. And you know, Joe Joe's doing a really good job uh, being vocal. And, and uh, dealing with us moving him around on defense a little bit. And he's going to make a lot of plays in the backfield doing so. All right, very good, guys. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. We'll take a quick Thank break. You. Don't forget, there's no First Bank presenter here for you. So on behalf of First Bank, there are your trophies. And on behalf of Zaxby's, more important than the trophies maybe, yeah. is the uh, $25 <laughs> Zaxby's gift card. So don't forget either one of those. And I suspect we'll see both of you guys back at some point this season. Hope so. All right. Good luck maybe this weekend. We'll see. Coach and I will talk about that in a little bit. Um, I'll ask you guys before you leave. So right now, over hills, <laughs> doesn't look like it's going to happen because of COVID issues. What's it like for you guys to, at this point in the week on a Monday to go in looking, thinking, well, maybe we're going to play on Saturday or on Friday. Maybe we're not. Does that bother you at all? Um, I would say when we first heard the news, it definitely killed a little bit of the momentum. You know, you don't really have anything to look forward to Friday night. Um, but I think throughout the practice, we kind of realized you've got to work hard regardless, um, even if you have a game or not. So we're going to continue to work like we've got something on Friday. Hopefully we do. And if we don't, we'll prepare for the next week. All right, very good. And just so I can hear you guys say it once, what's, what's the goal for this year? State, State you championship. Win. There you go. Very good. All right, take a quick break. I'm Chris Lambert, Coach Steve Bordeaux. See you on the other side of the break. Lamco Homes, from concept to design, constructed to fit your lifestyle we use only top quality finishes to make our house your home lamco homes our standards are others options pentair empowering people to move water Improve water, enjoy water, so that people can live their best, healthiest lives. Lives with purpose, lives with enjoyment, lives that flourish, lives with hope. Because at Pent Air, we're not just about better water.
We're about better life. Pantair, bringing water to life for life. Welcome back to the Zaxby's Coaches Show. Coach, you got the Lamco Holmes Scholar Athlete of the Week. Bring him in. Yeah, so this week, uh, senior offensive lineman center, Caden Pedley. Uh, Caden obviously does very, very well in the classroom and is doing an outstanding job for us leading our offensive line. Uh, was one of our captains for the week this week. And really proud of the way that he's taking command of that group up front. All right, how much credit would you give to your offensive line coach? Oh, a lot of credit. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do it without him. Couldn't do it without him. Very good. So that's, this, it's a group of, uh, of young men that, that um, you know, I think three or four or five years ago um, was athletic, uh, but not necessarily big enough. Coach and I were just talking about that. Um, talk about y'all's regimen in the weight room. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, weight room, that's everyday thing. Got to get big in the weight room. That's the main goal. Um, I think this summer we put a lot of, a lot of good uh, weight on, so hopefully that will help us. All right, well, I asked the guys that were here before you, what kind of metrics does the offensive line use to, to judge whether it's been a successful night or not? Um, I would say how happy the running backs are okay. and our quarterback. You know, we want to keep him up. Don't want him to see him on the ground at all. And uh, if we can make the running backs happy, we'll be happy. All right, in your time at Lee County, which running back has done the most to, like, boost y'all up and, and get uh, you fired up? I would say – TJ, TJ's okay. He, he's he's always got the energy, brings the energy. So that doesn't surprise me. And since he's <laughs> the biggest of all the running backs, yeah. you know, if you did not set him, he might have come see you. <laughs> all right, very good, Coach. You got got words? Uh, again, another high quality guy worked his butt off the last four years, uh, doing everything he's supposed to do, and it's you know continue to raise the bar for what it means to be a jacket. All right, as a scholar athlete, what kind of uh, scholarly goals do you have moving into the future? Um, obviously, um, get a higher education at a college somewhere and, uh, just keep the grades up. What would you like to study? Um, something in the business, business related. Very good. Well, we wish you the best of luck. You're on the right track and, uh, hopefully wherever it is that you continue to matriculate, you can walk out with a championship ring yes, sir. as you move on into college. Yes, good sir. job and, uh, good luck. If not this weekend, the following weekend, um, We'll be back on the other side of the break. You're watching the Zaxby's Coaches Show. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce. Because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. WilkinsonCars.com. Come visit us at our new location in Sanford. With the same great staff and the same great service, test drive one of our many different vehicles. Check out our state-of-the-art service department and collision center, where our team can have you back on the road in no time. We're right across from Walmart at 3335 North Carolina 87 South. Schedule your appointment online at wilkinsoncars.com or call us at 919-842-3322. We guarantee we're the place to be at Wilkinson Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Welcome back to Zaxby Scotia Show. Coach, you guys are in an interesting position this week. You're supposed to have overhills. It's supposed to be senior night. And uh, now you've got the call. We can't seem to shake loose yeah. of COVID implications and COVID protocols and the rest. And it, it appears that the game may not happen on Friday. Um, you had to break the news to your players today. Talk about how that went down. Yeah, so first off, we're looking for a week two game. So anybody has got a week two game open, feel free to give me a call. Uh, so talk to the varsity group uh, right after we got after, out of school. As soon as I let, found out, I kind of let them know. And first, uh, Eli mentioned it's kind of like, come on, what do we got to do with this? And then it was instantly, I felt like, refocus, let's go practice. I think we ended up having a really good practice. There was some competition at different points on the varsity side with some one-on-one, -on -one, uh, some seven-on-seven -seven action, different, different things I felt were very competitive and fun. Um, and I think that you know, a Monday typically for us is we got to fix the things we didn't necessarily do well in the previous game. So it didn't really change much of a Monday practice. Uh, so we got to continue to have that focus 
and I'm going to continue to get on the phone and try to find somebody to play us. So you talk about competition in, in your program since, I mean, you inherited a, a, a program that was on the rise in the first place. It's historically been a good program. But the number of young men that you've got in the program just keeps growing and growing and growing. You told me you think you're about 90 right yeah. now between the, the, the uh, varsity and the JV, and I've seen your JV team. Oh, They're yeah. huge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big group. we got over 30 freshmen, um, you know, 50 couple kids dressed last Thursday night. So it's, it's, it's just a, it's a good thing to see that people want to play. And they're working their butts off. They, they, they understand the guys above them have set expectation. And they know if they don't meet it, then, you know, they might not get to be a part of it. So two questions. I mean, you, you, this is the second year in a row where you've got young men in the program who've never lost, who were seniors, who've yeah. never lost a game in the regular season. Is there any pressure that comes along with that where you're like, man, you know, how are we going to react when we dr if we drop a regular season right. game? Is there any pressure associated with that? I don't. I feel like we already put enough pressure on ourselves in every game for us wanting to be, I'd say, about as perfect as you can be. Um, so I guess no matter where it's regular season game, whether it's practice, whether it's a scrimmage, whether it's, we just want to do the best we can. And obviously, hopefully that's a win. The other thing that I wanted to ask with a, with a program that has grown to the size of yours is there a tipping point where when you've got so many athletes on the on the field at one time during practice where you almost get to the point where there's too many young men out there to get quality reps for everybody out there or do you just the more the merrier yeah so i think we're still at the point right now where we do a really really good job coaches wise of having a a, a really good practice plan we script everything down to plays in practice and sometimes even to the point of who we want in on those plays in practice to make sure we're getting the guys reps um, so not to this point. I hope that we get to a point where we have so many kids that we have to find five or six more coaches. So, <laughs> so we, we talked uh, about the um, – I lost my train of thought <laughs> completely. You, you cracked me yeah, up with that. Yeah. You cracked me up. Oh, I know what it was. So with all these new bodies coming in, all these young men joining the program and, and the rest of that, last year – the guy that jumped out at you as a freshman was B.J. Brown. Oh, yeah. Kind of came out of nowhere. And I know we talked about what the back backfield was going to look like, and you dropped his name. And I'm like, what are you talking about a freshman <laughs> in the backfield? What are a couple of the names of guys that we didn't see last year at all or very minimally that are that you expect big contributions from this year? So, so I think one of them, it, we saw a lot on JV, and Mark Schlesinger yes. was a, a very good player for us. What are you going to um, do with him? So Mark is playing a lot of safety um, and may have some roles in some games at quarterback. Uh, depending on the game, maybe some at some receiver stuff. He works some of there too. Um, I think uh, Noah Johns and Ben Ransberger are two kids that are seniors that have really done a really good job of being special teams guys the last few years, and then now are very capable because they've worked the, worked so hard of giving us really quality reps. Man, Ben um, Ramsberger, where did he get so fast yeah, all of a sudden? Ben can fly. I know. Ben can fly. So he, he went out and ran track and was part of the full by one team that uh, you know finished second in the state. So Woo. he can roll. All right, Coach. It's been fun. Yes, sir. I don't know what it's going to look like Monday. Hopefully somebody out there has got a contact with somebody that wants to play you guys, and uh, you can get a game in on Friday. Otherwise, um, we were not going to have much to talk about on Monday, but we'll be here one way or the other. All right. Um, thanks for hanging out. Yes, sir. And uh, we'll see you soon. Appreciate it. Pentair, empowering people to move water, improve water, enjoy water, so that people can live their best, healthiest lives. Lives with purpose, lives with enjoyment, lives that flourish, lives with hope. Because at Pentair, we're not just about better water. We're about better life. Pent Air, bringing water to life for life. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Welcome back to the Zaxby's Coaches Show. Crystal Lambert joined on set by the marketing director for Zaxby's here in the region, Hector Perez. Hector, how are you, sir? Uh, you know what? Summer's over. School has started. We're back at the Coaches Show. You know, I 
I don't know if I want to say I couldn't be happier, but I'm definitely excited. <laughs> well, another year, man, another makeover. You transformed the hair. Oh, yeah, both of us uh, have. I mean, you we're, know. we're sleek now. We got, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a whole new life now. I have to look presentable and <laughs> all the rest of it. I'm tired of wearing adult clothes, man. I got spoiled with, you know, wearing gym shorts and T-shirts uh, every day. Yeah. But uh, tell me what's going on with Zaxby's. You know, we're, we're as progressing as we can. You know, things have changed, obviously, but they haven't changed for – the most part there's still a couple regulations out and about you know things are different in different counties so as a company you know we try to work with what we can um but we, we're just taking things as they are you know we've got a new promotion out with the southwest um salad that okay. now that it's out now so that's been good so that's you know a, the brightness in our life right now so, so <laughs> last year the zaxby's spicy chicken sandwich was new yeah it seems to have become a mainstay yes we're, we're hoping it stays on forever that's what it's looking like so we're happy for it. And as it stands today, is your dining room open? Yes, yes, we okay. are. I believe we are at a full capacity. Um, but, you know, as time has proven, a lot of people are very cautious of going to things. Sure. So, you know, we walk with people as they are, but we understand completely. Draft is always open as well. Got it. And you guys still are doing catering? Yes, sir, we are. That's, oh. that's actually been a, a, the major part of our summer, you know. Really? We figured that summer would be, you know, a little bit, you know, slow down and go to the beach and stuff like that. But now it's been it's been quite busy with orders and stuff like well, that. Well, everything's better with chicken fingers. Hey, man, there so. you go. Everything's better with chicken. <laughs> I love it. Any events on the horizon? Or are we still kind of slow? Um, you know, a lot of things are coming out and about. Um, like I, like I said, you know, some counties are different. Some people want to do things. Some people don't. So we're just, just taking things as they come, I guess. So it's kind of word to say, really. All right, very good. Well, as always, thank you for all your support for regional high school football. We couldn't do this without you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week, sir. Well, we're happy to be here, and we're looking forward to it. All right, no looking matter where you are in the viewing area, when you get a little peckish, Roll into Zaxby's. There's something on the menu that's going to make you happy. My personal recommendation, tongue torch sauce goes with anything. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Lamco Homes. From concept to design. Constructed to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Lamco Homes. Our standards are others' options. Welcome back to the Zaxby's Coaches Show. The second of our coaches has joined me. Coach Mike McClure, the mighty Southern League Cavaliers. How are you, sir? Doing good. How about you? Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Good. Thanks for asking. Um, week one, out of the gate, west over. Didn't go the way you wanted, I'm, I'm sure. No. But uh, what, are, what, are, um, what are your observations about the game? We was in the game. Um, going into halftime, we're down three. It's 3-6 three, going into halftime. I mean, and, uh, you know, coming out, you know, they kind of pulled away, started wearing down on us and, you know, not having the, the numbers that we would hope. Kind of played a factor as well as the, you know, the heat. Um, played a factor as well. But overall, you know, felt like we had a shot to, to win the game. It was a very winnable game. We just didn't come out and execute in the second half like we would hope to. Got a final score, twenty-seven to three. Um, other than the overall feeling that you had that it that, that it was a winnable game, what are some key points that stuck out for you that that were highlights for the team? Oh, uh, we had some guys that step up. You know, some uh, young guys, and we actually got a few of them here. One of them here tonight that that stepped up and. Um, a, a lot of those young guys that we put in, in roles and, and threw to the fire, they really stepped up and showed that they could kind of hang with the older kids, which was, you know, promising for us. A lot of transition in the program. Um, some talent left the program. You got a lot of young kids coming into the program. And you also added a, a quite, a, quite a few coaches to the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Talk about the turnover in the coaching staff and, and, and what these new guys brought to the table. Uh, very, you know, experience. It was was big, big part of it. Um, you know, we got we was fortunate enough to get Coach Sam Spencer, who was the head coach at JM, 
this past season. Um, he came down and now he's working with the offensive line and now and um and he brought his defensive coordinator who's working with the defensive line, Coach Rick Willby. Um and, and you know, we also have um a local um and former Southern League grad joining staff, Chris McClain. He's coaching defensive back. So okay. you know, it really just gives us another some more sets of eyes that we didn't have last season um you know and and now we're able to plan practice out in a different way and really cover and get more accomplished doing the practice times and, and you know we get more feedback during the game you know with, with more coaches versus you know it was just being us us four having four coaches last year so we definitely man, just having those extra set of eyes and, and guys that i can trust you know is, is a big part of it very good now it, it's one thing with with lee county you know, been on here running the table during the regular season, and, and most programs aren't in a position where they've got that luxury. Mm -hmm. In your building right now, what are the goals for 2021 20, 2022? 22. 2021 22. Well, we just, you know, we want to be better than we were last in, okay. in the spring. We want to progress, and we want to eventually, you know, begin to turn it over and get more consistent. That's a word we preach about. Um, and that, that our coaches, staff, that we preach on to the kids about is just being consistent. That's our, that's our biggest issue right now is not being consistent. And you can see, you can go back to the up and down seasons that Southern's had and, to, and just to the, uh, you know, the consistent part of, you know, coaching changes, coaching staffs and, and offense and defense and those type of things. And we just want to be, get consistent. And I think if we're consistent, um, you know, in the building and, and throughout our program, then that, that turnover is going to start to happen where we actually, you know, going to be a team to be uh, reckoned with and noticeable. Very good. So South Johnson this weekend? No. No. Nope. Uh, uh, Green Hope. Oh, my fault. That's Green right. Hope it home. is Green Hope. Yeah. My bad. Green Hope. Doing it with no notes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Tell us about Green Hope and the and the challenges that they pose. Well, they're going to run the trip. They're going to run the option. That's always uh, fun to defend it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially when you're trying to, you got to get ready for it in the week. You know, that's always fun. But, the, you know, the good side is they have to finish their game tonight. So they finish. Oh, the, really? Yeah, they finish the second half of their game tonight. So they're coming in, you know, basically playing two games in one week. So we're hoping that plays to our advantage uh, on Friday and we can, you know, get a win. All right, so you talked a little bit about guys playing different positions. Start right at the quarterback position. Joshua mm -hmm. Stone yeah. moving from playing safety and receiver over to playing quarterback. Talk about what he brings to the table as far as his athleticism and his skill set. Well, he's, he's extremely smart, you know, not having to be able to play the game. He understands what we're trying to do, and, he, and you know, he understands the read, and he came in right away and picked up the different types of reads and, and who to read and, um, you know, where to go with the football and those type of things. Now, mechanics wasn't there, obviously, because it's a position that he, would, that he hadn't played. But, you know, overall understanding standing is there, and I think that's the first – part of it you know, and also him being a threat to run um, as a different dynamic that we didn't have last season you know as far as a play breaks down he's able to keep it alive with his feet I think that's uh, very dangerous especially speaking from the defensive side of things when you got a quarterback who's capable of taking it you know the distance as as well as any running back is um, and I think that's that's a big part of our offense I would have assumed that you know a young man like that who's who's more accustomed to having the ball in his hands, trying to run down the field, mm -hmm. would be quick to tuck it and run. Um, how much of it, how, how much offense, how much dedication are you going to put into designed runs for him? Or are you just going to count on him to make the read, tuck it and go? Well, you know, we're, <coughs> we're more transitioning to, you know, design runs and, and, and having an offense run through him, him being one of our better athletes on the team. Uh, you know, I, I feel that we felt like that was just just smart thing to do is just kind of run things through him and um, let everyone else feed off of, off of him. And I think that's just the best route right now where we're at as a team, you know, not, uh, you know, he hasn't really thrown many passes with people in his face. So you don't want to put him in that type of position or in that circumstance where he's having to do that often. So that's what we're just trying to limit. So this is year two for you, but you've really only been on the ground for about a calendar year at this mm -hmm. point. At this point, with all of the transition, all of the flux, you're finally getting in here and getting comfortable. Which position group or groups would you say are in the best shape across the board, both sides of the ball right now? As far as physically or as or far in as – In terms of, um, of terms where of... you want them to be developmentally? Uh, our secondary. Okay. Our secondary, uh, they are 
you know, ahead of everybody right now, I feel like, um, you know, in terms of understanding things. And, and this was actually the group that just really played together for the first time in the spring. And, um, you know, it says a lot, and, and half of them are, are young guys. I got one sen a senior here tonight um, who plays in the secondary. But for the most part, our secondary is, is ahead of um, – our whole team, I feel like. And last year, you got kind of, you had some young men, freshmen, and sophomores that got kind of pressed into duty. That in mm -hmm. a in a different situation, probably would have been playing JV. Which of those young men are, are there? A couple names that pop into your head as guys that have kind of turned the corner, whether they've gotten a little bit bigger or just clicked better for them mm -hmm. this year. That are that are going to make a bigger impact than they did maybe last year. Uh, uh, definitely corner uh, Reggie Butler, who played last year. He's um, he's definitely, like you said, turned the corner. Uh, not really in size wise, but just understanding the game and, and having that confidence and, and willing to take on the best receiver versus last year, you know, he, he kind of started getting into that. And then, uh, you know, uh, but now he's really clicked that he's, he feel he can cover anybody. And, and uh, you know, I, I believe he can cover anybody. <laughs> he's going to, he's going to be, he's going to be great, you know, come by his senior year. Um, and uh, Marcus Blanks, who's here, to, here tonight, uh, center at center, he's, you know, understanding he's taking control of the offensive line and, um, you know, telling people what to do and, and really just taking charge at, at the center position. Um, those two guys who came in as freshmen last year stepped into starting roles. You know, they'll just continue to get better as time goes on. Now, we saw Blanks last year on the on the defensive line as well. Is he mm -hmm. still getting some reps over there yeah, as well? Yeah, he plays both ways. Um, we actually told him today he can't afford to take no no breaks, so he has to be in well conditioned because, you know, he pretty much won't come off the field. All right, very yeah. good. All right, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with more from Coach Mike McClure and the Southern League Cavaliers. 90 years ago, First Bank was founded. You know First Bank. The one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fashi, and we are First Bank. WilkinsonCars.com. Come visit us at our new location in Sanford. With the same great staff and the same great service, test drive one of our many different vehicles. Check out our state-of-the-art service department and collision center, where our team can have you back on the road in no time. We're right across from Walmart at 3335 North Carolina 87 South. Schedule your appointment online at wilkinsoncars.com or call us at 919-842-3322. We guarantee we're the place to be at Wilkinson Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. We are professional grade. All right, welcome back to the Zaxby's Coaches Show. Chris Lambert, Coach Mike McClure here. Coach, you got your players of the game from last week. Why don't you introduce him for us? Well, offensively, like, um, I just was talking about, we got Marcus Tate Blanks um, done a great job on the offensive line, defensive line for us. Um, he had he had the nose guard back into the secondary, dropping them all the way back this this week, and um, he really, like I say, took control up front, and, and he had a uh, he was one of our better offensive linemen this week, uh, and so he uh, we felt as if he deserved the offensive player award, and. Um, Beside him to his right is his, is his little brother, Mike Tate Blanks, uh, who's in the ninth grade. He uh, played inside linebacker. He had a great game for us, a, a great coming out game as a freshman. Ended up with eight tackles, one tackle for a loss, one sack, one fumble recovery, and one forced fumble. So, you know, he uh, he really got to the ball and he flew around. So we felt like he was deserving of defensive player um, today. All right, Marcus. Which do you prefer, offense or defense? Uh, I like defense better, but I'm probably better at offense. What is it about? What are, What is it about the, uh, the the differences between the two? I don't know. I probably just like tackling more stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And as an off as as the as the center, you're sort of the captain of the offensive line. How many How many responsibilities do you have other than just lining up and hitting the guy in front of you? I mean, sometimes the players. A lot of the players that go on the line are young, so they don't know what to do sometimes. And I got to just like tell, walk them through the play, like tell them what to do, their assignment and stuff like that. Had you ever played center before camp this year? Yes. I, uh, okay. So uh, so the, the shotgun snap, not a not a big deal for you? It's something you were nah, accustomed to doing? Mm -hmm. 
All right, that's an underrated part of the football game. You know, bad snaps will, will set you back every time. How, how much time do you spend on the center quarterback exchange practicing that? In practice, I get a lot of reps at it, especially when we go team and things like that. Yeah. All right, and Mike, you come. You're in a you, you're in a program now. I don't even know if you appreciate the heritage of linebacker play at Southern Lee. When you talk to folks in the region about Southern Lee over the last ten or twelve years, there've been some linebackers come through there to just lit it up, and getting the opportunity to start as a as a freshman. Um, what do you know about the history of linebacker play there in, in, in Cavalier football? Um, you know, they were good. You know. Um, they were more like run stoppers, you know, but I feel like I can play coverage and um, I can stop the run, you know. All right, so what, what, what's your favorite thing to do as a linebacker? If you, had to, if you had to do the same call three times in a row, would you be rushing the passer? Would you be trying to uh, – would you be making a run fit or would you be in coverage? Just blitz, 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 blitz. <laughs> I love it. Coach, you listening? <laughs> <laughs> that, that reminds me of, of the old days with Southern Lee. So uh, how 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 um how vocal have you been trying to get coach to let you come over and play some offense? Uh, not really. I don't really like offense like that. I just love the energy of the defense. So you know, I I like to stick to defense more. All right. So as a defensive player, a guy that wants to play defense, and those are those are hard to come by sometimes. Who at the next level, whether it's college or the pro, would you say you model your game after? Who who do you look at and be like, I want to be like that guy? Um, Amari Gainer. He's he hits hard, he flies around, you know, plays fast. All right, I love it. I love it. I love the energy, man. You're like about to come unglued over there. I'm digging it. Coach, I see why you yeah. like it. Anything else you'd like to add about these two young men? Nah, they just, you know, come to work, come to work each each and every day. And um, both of them have stepped up and become vocal leader. Even though Mike's, you know, only in the ninth grade, he he's he don't have a problem speaking his, you know, speaking his mind and, and breaking, the, breaking the guys down. And, you know, Marcus has evolved into that leader as well. So, he's, you know, great young man. They take care of what they have to do in the classroom as well, which is always important. All right, very good, guys. Appreciate you coming on with us. Good work, and uh, hopefully everything goes smoothly. You guys get to play ball this weekend. Um, what, what, are, what, what are the goals for this week? Uh, uh, beat uh, Green Hope. All right, very good. No, 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 not, not just beat him. We want to blow him out. I like that. I, like, I want that guy in the box over <laughs> me, man. That's all right right there. All right, we'll take a quick break. You're watching Zaxby's Coaches Show. We'll see you on the other side. Lamco Homes, from concept to design, constructed, to fit your lifestyle. We use only top quality finishes to make our house your home. Lamco Homes. Our standards are others' options. WilkinsonCars.com. Come visit us at our new location in Sanford. With the same great staff and the same great service, test drive one of our many different vehicles. Check out our state-of-the-art service department and collision center, where our team can have you back on the road in no time. We're right across from Walmart at 3335 North Carolina 87 South. Schedule your appointment online at wilkinsoncars.com or call us at 919-842-3322. We guarantee we're the place to be at Wilkinson Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. We are professional grade. All right, welcome back to the Zaxby's Coaches Show. Chris Lambert, Coach Mike McClure here. Coach, you've got your Lamco Holmes Scholar Athlete of the of the Week has joined us on set. If you would be so kind as to introduce him. All right. And then we got uh, Josh Freeman. Uh, plays free safety, sometimes strong safety with us today. Um, Josh had a, had a great night. Um, he came and had five tackles. Five, you know, and, and those are – uh, uh, that he made from his safety position. Those, you know, those are not easy tackles to make, especially when it's you and a defender and, and in between the, the you and the touchdown. So, you know, he came up, made some big stops, made some big plays. And um, playing the free safety position, got to be extremely smart. Got to be able to tell the whole secondary back end what to do, what coverage we're in, and, you know, when to rotate on, on, on motion and, and those type of things. And like I said, uh, that's one of our strongest parts of our, of our team if, is our secondary. Um, and so uh, well-deserving, um, taking care of what he has to do in the classroom, which is why he's up here today. So 
you know, we felt he was deserving of this award tonight. Well, first of all, I want to tell you the first thing that jumps out at you and the rest of the, sec of the secondary from last year, and I'm sure we see it this year, is you guys will come up and pop somebody. Um, I mean, you guys play fearless back there, and it's good to see. I mean, you guys come up, form tackle, pow, you're going to bring it, and don't ever shy away from anything. So keep that up. Uh, in the classroom, what do you hope to study at the next level when you go on to college? Really, I'm, I'm really undecided. I'm just trying to get my bachelor in mathematics. Okay. Because that opens up a lot of opportunities later in life. I like it, mathematics. I'm scared of you. Um, so that, you know, obviously good in the classroom. How does that translate on the field with everything? Because you're, you're playing a position where you see everything in front of you. Um, do you guys on the field bark out signals to the rest of the secondary? Does everybody take the play from the sideline? Talk about the communication on your defense. Uh, really, we, we really got to stress communication with the secondary because if we all the way across the field and you don't hear the play, we got to talk to each other. So we be barking up. He makes sure we do. All right, very good. Coach, anything you'd like to add? No, I'm just you know proud of the work that they've done, and, and you know, like you say, they they gotten better with their communication, and um, he's definitely stepped up as a leader, and you know we um, expect big things out of out of him. All right, very good. We'll take one last break and be back to wrap up this first 2021-22 Zaxby's Coaches Show. Ninety years ago, First Bank was founded. You know, First Bank the one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fashi, and we are First Bank. All right, welcome back. Final segment, first Zaxby's Coaches Show. First of all, a couple thank yous. want to thank... First Bank, who supplied the uh, Player of the Week trophies. Lamco Homes, brand new sponsor for the uh, Scholar Athlete Awards. Thanks, as always, to the folks at Zaxby's here in the region and Wilkinson. I, this place still feels brand new. Um, I'm still kind of in awe every time I come in here. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to come with a check and just buy one of these caddies off the lot, too. But Coach Green Hope this weekend. Um, I know, you know, very broadly you say we want to keep getting better. We mm -hmm. want to do this. But very specifically, or as specific as you can, what do you want to do better this week than, than last week? Tackle. <laughs> That's pretty simple. Tackle. Uh, definitely tackle, pursue the football, and just be physical. We weren't physical uh, that much at Westover. Um, we sat back and, and did a lot of catching offensively and defensively. And uh, we all know uh, football is a physical sport. You know, um, as Coach Blanks uh, said today, it's not a contact sport, it's a collision sport. And that's what we want to do more of, just, you know, being more physical against our opponent. We need more guys driving, you know, uh, defense alignment back into the secondary. We need more uh, linebackers playing at the line of scrimmage and not sitting back and waiting. So the biggest message that we're trying to see is being physical. Right now, that the, the type of physicality we had last year not seeing right now that I would like to see. I would like to see it, you know, uh, present itself on Friday. Okay, on offense, you guys lost a couple of playmakers from from last year's offense. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be frank. Um, who are the playmakers on offense that can make the explosive plays? That instead of going, you know, 15 yards when they see a when they see a hole, mm -hmm. can take it to the house. Who are the guys that you're counting on to be able to to break games open? Anthony Robinson. Um, he definitely, he definitely can do it. Um, we saw it in the scrimmage. He's capable of it. We just got to give him, you know, put the ball in his hands a little bit more and give him a little bit more opportunity to do so. Uh, he ran track this past year, so uh, when he gets in open open field, nobody's gonna catch him. Um, and, and like we said, Josh Stone, quarterback. So you know, really want those guys to you know have the ball and you know when they get it. You know, and they get opportunity, they can they know what to do with it. With with Morris being a late transfer out of the program, mm -hmm. who do you see stepping up into the RB one position? Or uh, is it still is it still up for grabs? That's something we're still trying to uh, figure out. But I will say we have a uh, first time first year player um, named uh, Julian Franceschi. Um, first time ever playing football, but when he gets it, he can go. 
Um, you know, so he's still in a, in a learning curve of, you know, uh, things like getting hit is new to him and those type of things. But when I tell you he, he goes hard and he doesn't stop, um, that's, that's him all day. And, um, you know, he, he has the potential to, to uh, you know, be in, uh, somebody else that we count on, you know, sure. in the backfield. And, and at this point, it, it's funny because I've been talking about this young man for four years. John Wilson's kind of the grizzled vet. Seems yeah. like he's been at Southern yeah. since they opened school 13 <laughs> years ago. We ever going to see him on offense? You will. You're not going to tip your hand any farther you than will. that? I like it. You will. All right, very good. <laughs> very good. All right, this has been fun. Coach, appreciate you coming out. Thanks to uh, Southern Lee. Thanks to all of the Lee County folks. Thanks again to Wilkinson, to Zaxby's, to First Bank, to uh, Lamco Homes, and everybody that makes this possible. Um, home game this week, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what are the capacity restrictions? What's going on with tickets? I don't think it's not. All tickets will be bought online, though. Okay. Um, and if you don't get them prior to the game, then uh, you still can come up and you scan a QR code at the at the uh, you know at the gate, and it'll send you right directly to the link, and then you're able to uh, purchase tickets then. All right. So. Very good. Hope you have a good turnout. Um, I'll be out this week. I'm gonna be in Chicago for the weekend. Right. So, uh, good luck to you, and uh, we will see you soon. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This has been the Zaxby's Coaches Show. I'm Krista Lambert, and we are out. Peace. Welcome to the Zaxby's Coaches Show, brought to you by First Bank, Wilkinson Chevy Cadillac Buick GMC, and Zaxby's Friends, Family, Flavor, with your host, Krista Lambert, only on the NFHS Network. Brought to you by New Image Media.